A man has a habit of certain obsessions in his old age. For myself, it's conquest through diplomacy or the sword. Having founded the kingdom of Aragon and with only a single heir, my concern lies in giving him the most opportunities for his future as possible. I am this close to securing the Mediterranean for my son, although what my long-reigned subjects will think of a new king cannot say it will be easy. The West is fractured, and Iberia remains in turmoil. How I spend these last years of my life may well determine the success or failure of my son and grandsons. May my life end fighting for their future. Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 in our King of Aragon campaign. First and foremost, thank you so much for your patience and your support. Uh, I was blessed with a sickness, if you want to call it a blessing, and unfortunately through that it left my vocal cords strained to the point where uh, I couldn't even talk even to this degree. It was uh, too stressful and too painful for me. So now... I'm finally able to breathe well, and while my throat and my voice isn't entirely better, it is better than it was. So hopefully I'll be able to moderate myself enough to where it won't be so much of an issue and I can still heal properly and get back into the full swing of things. But again, thank you so much for your support. What you can do to really boost this video up, of course, as always, is engage the YouTube algorithm by giving it a like, subbing to the channel, turning on bell notifications, and leaving your comments about anything. We may go a little bit longer for this episode. I don't know yet. I record these at the beginning. But just as a preface, there's a decent chance that this may go all the way to the very end, or it may just be well over an hour long. I'm wanting to wrap up the series, not in a negative way, but simply just wanting to wrap up the series. So keep that in mind as we pursue this. You'll be able to see this, and hopefully you will enjoy the return as much as I am excited to record it for you. Thank you very much. Roleplay face on. Time to get back to King Guilfrey of Aragon. As I gaze upon my kingdom, I see several ways that we can enhance its future, enlarge its boundaries, and push its diplomatic realms as far as possible. We are currently under a series of truces and alliances. In the truces, we have seven years until we can continue to rip apart King Savarico, the brave of Lyon. This man is not doing so entirely hot. He as, is as, at a stress level. Uh, his health is unfortunately fine, but he is a drunkard. He is a familial kinslayer, which honestly to me is enough to go to war consistently. How dare he? He is also sadistic and zealous. So anything we could do to rip him apart would be great, but it appears that unless something mysterious happens, we have to wait seven years. That being said, we do have several options. The Duchy of Corsica. We could declare war on him right now. And in fact, it would be much in our favor to try and push that as quickly as possible. However, having just finished a war, I would rather let my troops rest a bit and simply levy up as much as possible. We do have a, our uh, claims being fabricated in the chiefdom of Palermo. We would then pursue the city or the chiefdom of Enna. And then we would then have to pursue Syracuse and Messina. Therein lies our biggest struggle for our entire family and the future in securing the Mediterranean. In that not only does he have 8,200 men, Basilius Leon VII, but he does have some very influential allies. There is roundabout. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't mean to laugh at the 
faces, but... <laughs> He has near on 10,000 soldiers at his command uh, between all of his alliances. Now, what we could easily do is we could f fabricate an alliance through some means, be it grandsons and granddaughters, uh, be it uh, any manner of things that would allow us to be able to forge an alliance with King Carloman II of Aquitaine. 5,100 men is quite a lot and would bring us over what we would need to take on the Byzantine Empire. That is not our only option, though. We could try to get... Uh, let's see, we do have an alliance with Kalat Ayyub. We're allied to Count Carloman of Barry. Or Brittany, excuse me. Uh, but Brittany is... Uh, they're doing okay. My daughter is okay. Uh, the, the family is doing okay. We have Prince Healy of Brittany and Prince Jasper, so that's a pretty good thing. Overall, it seems like the Empire might be thriving just a little bit, uh, which is always a good sight to see. And then we also have uh, Duke Christopher of Aragon. Now, at 3,000 men, he is influential. However, I do not believe that I can actually summon him to war. He is more of a defensive alliance. My brother being one of my dukes, uh, that seems to make sense. So what we could do is we could go after Corsica, secure the uh, the kingdom of Sardinia, have two kingdoms of Aragon and Sardinia, and then maybe somehow work on Sicily as much as possible. Now, securing the Mediterranean, I have to completely control Sicily. Now, this is the chiefdom. This is the duchy, which is, again, hopefully by the time we get to having to face the Byzantines, we can work on that. There are several other smaller wars. I could go after uh, Emir Jahan, Mohammedas of Navarra, in a simple struggle clash, which I could win that fairly easily. We could go after Vali Riza Halmizadi of Tudila as well for the same reason. In fact, it would be a little bit more difficult, but nothing outrageous. And then, I mean, there are several areas in which we could pursue things to expand the kingdom and exert our influence. The biggest concern is that I have reigned for a very, very long time. My heir, Infant Gufi, is 23 and I'm simply afraid that my vassals won't accept him, including my brother, his uncle. Now, he is a decently good, he will make a very good king, actually. Uh, that is <laughs> without a doubt. It will just depend on how everything else goes. That's the only, that is the biggest hesitancy. Now, I do have two grandsons on that line, which is a problem in of itself because we may have to figure out how to disinherit and or convince the lad to take the vow and renounce everything. Our kingdom is too big to worry about multiple grandsons. However, Gifrida Barcelona is a very handsome young child who is curious. And as such, I have commanded my son to be the ward of his son, or to ward his son, and focus on diplomacy. That seems to be a relatively good area, and considering the grand scheme of the kingdom as a whole, it would be good if we had a diplomatic king as a focus. Plans are being set in place. We will try and see what we can do, but I think it's fair to say that we will rest for a little bit and then continue my warmongering. But not before my favorite pastime, holding court. The woman who approaches my throne is clearly a commoner. My lord, she begins her speech, I represent the local community of Barcelona. In the last few months, our cemeteries have been plagued with the disappearance of bodies. All had been dug up and left no trace. At first, we feared wild animals or obscure powers at work. But then your own court physician, Leoflid, was caught red-handed hauling the dead away for her experiments. Please put a stop 
to this blasphemy. Oh, Leofled. Oh, oh, Leofled. Luckily, I can just tell her to shove off. <laughs> She'll lose 10 opinion of me, which isn't really that big of a problem. I believe it wouldn't really affect. And we would get safe cemeteries, which would increase the, uh, the popular opinion of the county of Barcelona by 25 for 10 years. Absolutely. Before the quarter's underway, my chancellor picks, pulls me aside. To my surprise, he's brandishing a garish shawl. My lord, there will be so many attending your court. I know you are somewhat challenged in remembering every face from whence it hails. I propose a solution. We require all at all. We require all at the court to wear dress, which includes a local style recognizable. He hoists, hoists a shawl at me. For those without clear regional fashions, taking liberty of hiring a tailor who can suggest some traditional garb for them to wear. I, I, I don't forget faces. I'm not that old. Try not to take offense to it. But if I don't falter, I gain six court grandeur and 300 diplomacy style. Very nice. So in the ceremonial formality of the proceedings has dropped with the hum and bustle of courtly life taking its place. It's been some months now. My levy is strong enough. It's more than strong enough. I have placed a mustering grounds in Caligari. Excuse me, in Cagliari. It's time to go after Duke Nicholas of Corsica. He was apparently in three different wars. One of them way to the north. I'm not quite sure how you inherited this small piece, but for a very small amount of prestige, I think I can certainly be bothered with taking your soldiers with 300 men. Let's raise only men at arms here. Rise, my friends. Very nice. I do believe we could still take him on, considering that most of his troops are levies. I still believe we have the advantage, even though King Theodulus II has uh, joined. We should be able to snag him. Very nice. The Battle of Vecchio. There's not a single chance. We only lost 11 men to their 800. Oof, there are two survivors left. And now we lay siege with our 30 onagers. It shouldn't be a very long siege at all. A mere months. And we'll be good. While on campaign, my archbishop comes to me. I prowl through documents. Finally found enough material to make the case that I am the rightful lord, chiefdom of Palermo. But seeing as Apollonius is unfortunately insists on being orthodox, you could even argue that I have a claim on all of Sicily. Oh, Archbishop. Oh, Archbishop, you are the man among men. Absolutely, I will lay claim to all of Sicily. That saves us so much time and money. Ho, ho, ho. Very, very nice. This is one happy king. 99%. Give it another month and we'll be good. Emir Amiadin's friendship, while his numerous attempts to curry my favor, have not gone unnoticed. Oh, no. No, there is still very much a certain charm. We will deal with that. And there we go. A very, very quick and simple war. Ajaccio. Hmm. We're going to get granted to a local Sardinian man. Now, we could certainly go through here and find someone of the Sardinian faith, or culture, rather. Someone who perhaps has a great deal Mm, Countess Vittoria, I can't continue to give you any more land. Vivianu, you are lowborn, but you are a mastermind philosopher. You have quite the stewardship about you. You are now my vassal. Good luck with the control, but now at least popular opinion won't be, uh, oh, it's at zero, but it will perhaps be better in the future. Now, it would be simple and easy to just go right along. And in fact, we might. We just might do it. I have the coffers for it. 
The question is, do I take Palermo or do I take Inna? Palermo seems to be the case. Let's go to war back to back. Let's push our claims while we have the momentum. That's the only thing that makes sense. We will raise all of our men here and go to war right after another. The royal court beckons me. My knight, Bodan, has excelled during our recent battles and my court is buzzing with excitement. What an accomplished knight. What a role model. What a man. With all the praise raining down, it's made clear that I am expected to officially reward him. Arborea. Where is Arborea? I want to make sure that I am giving away something that isn't... Ooh, right there. You know what? I honestly, I am okay with that. He's the new lord of the county of Arborea. Indeed. Ooh. Isabeau, daughter and heir of Count Carloman of Berry, has given birth to a daughter. Hmm, Isabeau, well done. Since the little one is part of the Barcelona dynasty, she should be blessed with a good name. I think I have a name. Let's name her after my own mother, Inigwin. She was a strong woman. I absolutely think that's smart. May you grow strong and wise, my granddaughter. And we've also gained another martial perk. It's time for me to push the invasion. And we will go down to prepared conscription, army gold maintenance reduction, reinforcement rate increase, absolutely, in an attempt to get absolute control. In my attempts to influence Amir Madin Ibn Faiz, he seems to have warmed to me at last from his last letter. While this is success, I'm tempted to use this opportunity, try and get even closer. If I did, we're going to put our diplomacy skills to the test. He appreciates the effort indeed. And 84 is simply close enough, I do believe, because my secret goal here is an end decision in which every other involved ruler has at least a 60 opinion of me so I can trigger status quo. I only need two more left. One of them is King Leon, and honestly, we could switch things very, very quickly and push into that realm. The other one seems to be Taifa of Navarra. Everyone else recognizes my authority in the Iberian Peninsula. We could have a lasting peace. I could send a gift of 150 gold to, ooh, to boost the opinion by 95. How much to send him gold? 150 as well. That seems a little outside of what would be needed. However, perhaps if I offer him a ward, I wonder what he would think of that. And then seven years, I know it's a switch, but if I can end this conflict now for the future of my realm, hmm, I'm not sure yet. Not entirely okay with that. We will come back to it. Emir Yahan, Mohammedas of Navarra, has accepted my ward, but it appears has not swayed him at all. So we will try and sway him as much as possible just to see what happens. County of Palermo, Palermo is mine. Inna is next with the army, the enemy's army being nowhere in the world. We don't see them at all. And I also have a new bishop, Bernard Relichizdi. Okay. All right. You're a young strapping lad, 17 years old. Not a bad archbishop for my uh, for my son to actually have. So, well done. A commoner of Basque heritage has been accosted in the streets of Barcelona. Making a statement in their defense, convince Yahan, the equally Basque of my good character. Oh, that's... Absolutely. We'll do this. No sooner do I send the response in defense and ward away people in my court, and it appears that things have changed. Navarra is no longer available. 
it has been absorbed by the kingdom of Lyon. Hmm. We will see how this war progresses. But we may have the capabilities to end the Iberian struggle and end a conflict that's lasted for generations and focus instead on capturing and conquering through the Mediterranean instead. No sooner is the siege of Imna over than Count Nigola and Count Punk are discussing the strategy going forward. Nigola, of course, is outraged, banging his fist on the table and proclaiming we should charge the enemy directly, crush them with sheer might of our armies, which we certainly could do. Punk nervously mutters how we should avoid unnecessary engagements and fight a war of attrition equally as valid. We can get the benefits of both while knocking out the advantage. You know what? Let's employ both. Now it's time to move to the capital, the High Chiefdom of Calabria. Enrico Calabria, hoping that this might end the war with no army still in sight anywhere in the kingdom. No letters warning of anything. We may just win this with only taking attrition for deaths and casualties. In two months, the capital is mine. I'm going to go ahead and move to the tribe of Casenza, but we shouldn't need it. The war should end relatively soon, possibly before we even lay siege. And there it is. The Argonese claim on the High Chiefdom of Sicily. We gain the High Chiefdom of Sicily, the Chiefdom of Enna, and the city of Gerginti. Gain 75 fame as well. Not too shabby, if I might say so. Myself. Now, we need to enlist the control. After three weeks or four weeks of my brother, he will need to go to Gastro Giovanni in order to settle the region down there. But we also have simple stone quarries, which is not too shabby of a place to have. But we also, we need some more defenses here. A level three is not bad. Outposts? No, hill forts is indeed where we will go here to secure that hilltop which will then be able to lay claim here. We are not ready for this. We are not ready for this fight yet. But maybe we will be soon. In typical style, my son-in-law, who I've not heard from in a while, who keeps relative distance, literally and figuratively, has called to honor my alliance with him in the uh, Liberty War. It appears that Duke Rudolf II of Upper Burgundy, his Chancellor, and his Marshal, Duke Frederick of Westphalen, are rising up in revolt. The lad still only has 600 men. Duke Rudolf II has 600, and Duke Frederick don't know why they're both wearing crowns. They don't deserve them, nor is it worthy of their titles. I'll number them three to one. I will enter this war. Uh, unwillingly, without a doubt. But if I can win it quick, if I can win it early, I can be home for figurative dinner. No sooner am I setting off to join the war with my son-in-law than a letter comes via one of my courtiers. King Savarico, the brave of Lyon, has had a change of heart. He sees the potential for peace in the realm in Iberia and has offered to at least feign a general opinion of me if it would mean an actual peace. This means that a status quo can be reached. These endless conflicts over the peninsula only weaken us all. It's time to accept that Iberia was never meant to be unified and instead be content with Aragon. I will gain the nickname the Pragmatic, which is fitting considering the end of my life. Every independent or separated duchy becomes a de jure kingdom Connected and completely controlled duchies transfer de jure to the primary kingdom of their top liege. Every de jure kingdom 
with more than five counties becomes a de jure empire. The remaining kingdoms will fall under the de jure of the neighboring empire. The empire of Hispania is permanently destroyed, solidifying the idea of not solidifying everyone under a single kingdom. Holy wars for the duchies and conquered duchess Casas bellies against other involved cultures go up. The best part for me and my realm, Dynasty Barcelona gains 10,000 renown. You and independent involved rulers unlock the enforced truce interaction towards other houses. House Barcelona gains compromise, which means the entire house Independent rulers value them a little more, and the advantage in provinces with the same cultural heritage go up by five. I also gain regional stronghold, which means this county and the historic capital gains fort level, garrison increases, and development growth. Considering the entire generations of House Barcelona has lived in relative unison, in relative peace, with Muslims for a large degree outside of establishing the kingdom and now empire of Aragon. I feel this is the best for me and my family. Status quo is not the absolute best outcome, but it is one that ensures the future of my family and it fulfills my life's goal. Oh, I can breathe a little easier. There is less of a mountain and more now of just a simple boulder on my shoulders. I have fulfilled something that my father and my grandfather could only have dreamed of. That's been my entire life. And I'm happy to end the Iberian struggle. For too long, the Iberian peoples have suffered at the hands of the Moorish invaders. Today, we will restore the hope that the rightful heirs of Rome lost centuries ago. It's now clear there will be no end to this cycle of bloodshed if things continue. This peninsula will not bear unification. We must be satisfied with Aragon and leave the other potentates of Iberia down to their devices for now. The level of splendor has increased. That Barcelona dynasty is known now far and wide. And we now have 10,000 renown. Well, a little more than that to utilize as much as possible. Inner circle. House members will not need a salary when appointed to a court position and can be fired without prestige. Going forward, we will be a desirable match and we will have a renowned name, increasing our prestige, the number of knights, further reducing the mercenary hire costs. And we will have convergent blood, which increases the chance of reinforcing congenital traits. House Barcelona has leapt forward genetically in ways that I can't possibly oh, have fathomed. And now, as we have that lasting peace, it's time to continue to focus on the war that we were about to set up on. Having successfully taken the Duchy of Upper Burgundy, I look around to find where my services are most needed. It appears... My son-in-law's incompetence knows no bound. We're gonna go after the Barony of Summer while that army lauds around. Someone's apparently trying to kill my Cineskull. How dare they? Not a fight at all, unfortunately. And it appears that he has been captured. Which now means that that war will end and my men were useless. And it seems Punk Hug, commander who's helped me several times, who has spectacular stewardship, has died of old age. I will have to appoint someone while I am on the travel path. Norbert von Reitberg. You could certainly do it. However, Countess Vittori, uh, Vittoria, she certainly would be worthy of it. And you know what? We are actually going to push promote culture. We have it in Barcelona, we need it in Girona. And a defeat it has been. Okay. Now that we are here, now that things have settled down a smidgen, 
we can take a look at things and take a breath of air. We have the Empire of Aragon, which now means that even on succession, while things will definitely be split equally, my son will inherit and become an emperor. As such, even if his two sons were to inherit the kingdom, breakup would still not matter. Which is good. That's a positive. That's exactly what we need to not have to worry about. While I would love to continue my war here, going after them, mm, it's just not feasible. I need better alliances. I need alliances. The papacy would be great, but hmm. You know what? These men are orthodox. They're already hired. Do orthodox view us as a hostile? No, we consider them astray, so I would not be able to use them. I need to forge alliances. And I need to do it quickly if I want to take on the Byzantines. Having finally wrestled the Duchy of Corsica from its previous owner. I'm not terribly concerned about who I give this to. However, I would like to bring someone new on to the board. Count Viviano of Ajaccio. I think he would make a good duke. He's already in the area. He is of the Sardinian and Catholic affiliations. It's a big job, and I hope I just did not screw up <laughs> and make a mistake in my old age. Duchess Mara of Corsica. They have no family as of yet, but perhaps they will. Hopefully they will. I do wish them the best. And as I look upon the empire that is Aragon, I also realize that we can reform the Swaby culture just a minute bit. There are several things we can do, and I had mentioned in the previously that if I were able to reform it in any way, shape, or form, that malleable subjects would be the one to do it, and I think that would indeed be it. It is a little bit of a mixed bag between forming factions learning languages, promoting cultures, etc. But I think the best things is that we are, we have vastly more mercenary companies. Our cultural acceptance gains are increased vastly. Our mercenary hire costs reduce by half. Different culture opinions go up. There is no negative opinion from other cultures. And we get a larger vassal levy contribution. It will take five years. I honestly don't know if I have five years. But perhaps I can set things in motion that will ease my son's passing into emperorship, make things a little better. As you grow older, the younger generation seem to think that they can do things without your notice. But one evening, Spymaster Mateau sits in a dimly lit council room. His gaze and quill are focused upon inconspicuous expense reports, yet beside him lie clay molds with the royal stamp, which would only be needed if he intended to defraud the realm. To think that a man of his position would dare act so disgracefully under the eyes of God. Disgracefully, but skillfully. Had I not caught him in the act, nobody would have been the wiser. Definitely have a fair reason to imprison him. Absolutely. I now need a new spy master. Mayor Roderick. I think you'll do for sure. Disrupt any schemes as best that you can. And let's pay a little visit. Now I could ransom him for 50 buckaroonies. That would definitely be worthwhile. but I could torture him. 
What else is he hiding? I would gain dread. I would spend a little bit of piety, which isn't too bad. Let's torture him and see what happens. When one can twist words for pleasure as well as myself, twisting them for harm is a simple matter. Taking out a long, vol large volume of poetry from my arms, I unfurl it, letting the scroll hit the floor. Roll gently backward. Please, no, please. I'll tell you anything. I, 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 I have attempted to a murder count Odomendus. Intriguing. Very, very intriguing. So, he is near death. I'll ransom him. I got what I needed out of him. That's not a problem. He accepted. Uh, we'll see what ends up happening to him, but... Next time, try not to, uh, oof, yeah, try not to do that, huh? Now, for sure, attempted murder is a strong, strong hook. Hmm. Could expose the secret, but uh, I think I'll hold on to it for a rainy day. Everything else, uh, there's not much else going on in the Empire, although I say that. Basilius Leon VII is something I am paying attention to because he is currently supporting an independence war that is led by Duchess Gambara of Benevento. And their allies are very, very many without a doubt, but the papacy has some material gains, a rather large army that can easily take on Basilius Leon, and it seems as though he is losing some troops. This is a potential chance to take advantage I'm not sure if I want to do it just yet, but he is creeping throughout Italia, and I think it bears saying we need to figure out how to use this to our advantage. Unfortunately, Duke Christopher of Aragon has passed into the next life. He died of cancer. My brother, my my marshal, my commander, my best friend. Oh, you will be sorely, sorely missed. You have been such a crucial part of building the empire that is Aragon. If you can hear me, I sent your son, Duke Guthrie II, my nephew, a poem of mourning to help ease both of our passings. He accepted it. He was very thankful of it, without a doubt. And while no one could truly replace you, I have let Count Odomundus of Galura take your place. Dearest brother. Dearest, dearest brother, thank you for your time in my life. I do appreciate it. I hope the next life treats you even greater. Before I could truly finish mourning, it appears that my sister, Judith, has died. We're gonna call a hunt. I need to work some sweat off my back and work through this morning. And while on the hunt, poachers, they huddle together as I ride up with my guards, making a poor job of hiding the dead heart behind them. I do not do this, your mercy. Their blades and bows belie their words. I think the animal is mine, along with fines for their lives. There's a 50% chance of gaining gold and prestige. We'll also same equal chance of losing prestige and getting poaching outrage in the county of Palas. But they acquiesce. acquiesce. Works for me. The hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horses to leave the plains behind as the servants prepare the heart. Another game for the journey back. In spite of our difficulties, the hunt went very well. I gain even more prestige and lose a significant amount of stress, which is fantastic. Now, Count Hug, my brother, Declaring our friendships. Absolutely. You're significantly younger than I am. And he accepts enthusiastically. Duke Christopher, you are not being replaced. Do not ever mistake that. However, true friendship at my age is something that needs to be accounted for. And something that I hope I can continue to use in the future until my death. The war is not going well. For Basilius. Well, actually, it is technically going well. But regarding his military strength, he has been weakened. 
We believe now is the time to strike as quickly as possible. We still are outnumbered. However, I do believe that I could gain some mercenaries, which would allow me to use... Oh, hopefully, hopefully I can use this to my advantage and take things before it gets out of hand, before he recovers. War has been declared. We will establish a new rally point at Aragon. We will raise all of our forces here. We will hire the best mercenaries that we can easily afford, which appears to only be simple slaughterers. Let's go with the Basque Band of Vizcaya. Two Faris, which are not too great, but it's Captain Ubaidun of the Basque, which I am more concerned about. Here we go. Now, I can not raise any Catholic Holy Orders, which is a bit unfortunate, but understandable. And I will summon everyone I can where it makes sense to join my war and hope that potentially this war does not end too quickly. Both allies are in. Fantastic. All of my men are summoned, minus my mercenaries. Let's move into Syracusa. Try and take it as quickly as we can. As the siege lingers on, First Army of Constantinople has ridden to lay siege in Palermo. We should be able to very easily win this battle. Whether he takes off or not has yet to be seen, but I think it's safe to say we will catch them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mike. Oh, my word. An injured vassal. Sorry, there's nothing that can be done. A very, very well-fought victory there. Absolutely it was. We did lose several, several men. Almost 1,400, but that's nothing compared to his losses. Our knights killed... So, oh, my word. Our knights are actually on equal ground, which is very, very interesting. The benefit to him is that he has cataphracts and house guards. However, that wasn't enough. My word, we are both stacked. Count Odomangus did 142 kills. Count Bowden, 138 this has won us a significant victory. Something I will take advantage of by moving to Messina and hope that oof, if we can win this, this will be a huge victory. And now apparently my sister has died as well. Goodness gracious. The Byzantines are on the move again. I can finally get my loyalty and respect along the gallant tree. Do not believe they'll be able to take it before I can make my move, which is always good. Father finally passed at 69 years old. He reigned for over half of his life. And he died while on campaign. It's so fitting. During the end of his life, it seemed like his obsession was towards ensuring that this great kingdom, this empire now of ours, would only become greater. And it's incredible to see several generations' motives, their objectives, their lives written in these books. I can't help but admire my father even more so than I did. But he couldn't outsmart death. But now I... Emperor Guthrie the second have ascended the throne. I will continue in my father's interests because they are my interests as well. Securing the Mediterranean is the ultimate prize. Iberia is at peace, but I'm not at peace with the world. To my new subjects, I am Emperor Guthrie the second of Aragon. I am forgiving. Something that people should be reminded of. I am calm, but I am stubborn. I'm also sadistic. I am in a conundrum. Not many people can figure me out. Perhaps even I haven't figured myself out. With a diplomacy of 15, 
I certainly, without a doubt, have some skills in that area. My stewardship is excellent, allowing me a large realm. I have several men at my helm, and I am led hand in hand, side by side, with Countess Isabeau of Barry. My wife is a fantastic woman of great renown, of great skill, and for that I am thankful. Now, I'm also a murderer. Makes me a little bit hard to love, but I have a solution. In the midst of war, while stewardship is certainly going to be my focus, I can't help but wonder if foreign affairs or even majesty would go a ways towards soothing some things. But alas, duty focus is what I will go towards. Avaricious is indeed one of the things that I am focusing on. Demanding payments for hooks, income per stress level, men-at-arms maintenance per dread, and war profiteering are all within my realm. And while I am hemorrhaging, I do think there is room for me to make my own way and still secure this war. Now, I am not endorsed by my patriarch. Bernard, you served my father well. I will ensure that you can trust me. As for my council, most have left, but many, I assume, will return. Duke Guffrey of Aragon, who is my cousin, you, sir, could fit many, many places, but I will gladly put you there. I could demand your conversion. Let's try it. If I, he converts, it would be greatly appreciated. As for my marshal, Count Odomundus, you will return, and I will be thankful for you. Mayor Roderick of Cordona, even though you are disfigured and wounded, I would gladly have you at my side. Duchess Adelaida, you can indeed come and serve as my chancellor. There are other things that we have to consider here. I can designate a guardian for Inigwin. My daughter, that will be me. And unfortunately, we have too few knights. But we are still very much, very much in the positive. Court tutor, that's fine. Personal champions, yes. I'm going to have Duke Guffrey, just in case he decides to do anything. We will, oof, we definitely have a lot of people we can use. Knight's effectiveness is not as great, that is for sure. And I still cannot hire anyone. Now, I assume because my Archbishop doesn't like me, Pope Callistus does not either. This is true. There are very much things about me that he doesn't like. We can work on that in the future. But in the meantime, I can only pray. Oh. They want independence from their liege. Of course, Duke Geoffrey II. And of course, Mayor Lev of Olat. We may be fighting multiple wars at once. But you know what? I can really set the stage. In a very, very positive manner. Emperor Savarico just had a new son. And while guardianship would be great, I do believe I could arrange a marriage, matrilineal even, that would work, gaining me 5,000 troops. Aquitaine seems interesting. I wish I could arrange a marriage between my son and someone within the papacy, but that does not appear to be possible. However, the family of King Carloman III would be able to nab an alliance there. Could this be the key to victory and the key to my future in securing the Mediterranean? We will have to see regarding succession. Titles will be lost and that is okay. The important thing is that I do not lose my empire. I could pass high crown authority as well, which increases levy contribution and taxes. Vassals cannot wage war. The titles cannot be inherited by anyone outside. All vassals who refuse title revocation, considered criminals. Now, we could change to partition if we wanted to as soon as we change our laws, but... Also, we're not Swabian anymore. We're Catalan. 
That's an important thing to remember because it does mean that I don't actually have the same culture. Now, I could simply convert to his culture, and I honestly might do that if possible. We will definitely have to see. For now, I think it's important that I focus on this war here and figure out what I'm going to do while I work on things, and we'll secure my court later. An alliance has been formed, Emperor Savarico and King Carloman III. I do have several dangerous factions. We knew this was coming. We knew things wouldn't be great. We're going to let them declare war on us, but first, holy Moses. Let's call on King Carloman III. <laughs> several factions are pulling against me. I became the culture ahead of the Catalan culture, which is fantastic. I have won. I'm going to put Count Odomundus, and we are going to go after the Byzantines again and hope that we can win this war. He's been caught. It's Basilius Leon VII himself. Not a smart move, lad. We have won yet again. 69. Nice. I think it's safe to say we need to move down to the Barony of Malta. I think we have this one in the bag for sure, but I still have to work my magic on it as much as I can. Perfect. I've taken the Barony Malta. And my allies, oof, my allies are wrecking Basilius Leon. 99%. We will wait here for a little while. 100%. Victory is mine. And now we can breathe. Prisoners can be ransomed. 200, I will wait. 10, I can certainly win there. I can certainly win there. Oof, 100, we will wait for you as well. 30 there as well. Fantastic. Now, to pay attention to the court. The drunken antics of my cousin, Guilfrey, have been the subject of court gossip before. Good lord. Getting drunk by Ben Morting, passing out in the castle. Guilfrey's degenerate behavior is an embarrassment. A stern talking to will definitely set him straight. Unfortunately, that puts me at a critical stress level. Regardless, we have court to hold. May Lord, I represent the Greek people of the county of Gastro Giovanni. We are devoted and faithful subjects, but our land is poor, underdeveloped, and scarcely populated. Please allow us to recolonize it. Uh, no. Sorry. There we go. Duke Guffrey, my cousin, steward, and vassal. My lord, the threat of Aquitaine weighs heavy on my mind. King Bernard looms across the border. You must help fortify my lands. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Aragon must be fortified. He gains 20 opinion of me. I gain a weak hook, which I could then turn around and use. And my business here is done. Now, as for court grandeur, we are slowly moving forward between grandeur levels 8 and 9. We have several court artifacts, including one that my father pillaged that he never spoke of or wrote about, the Sandals of Jesus. Gaining me some piety and piety per night, which is a significant amount without a doubt. Unfortunately, it's not enough for me to impress Pope Callistus. <sighs> and we need to search for a physician. Perhaps we have some courtiers. A hail woman. That's fantastic, but not useful for us. If we have any ladies in waiting, hmm, could we find you a spouse who is a physician? Jarir, Ish Biliad, absolutely, fantastic. But we have court physicians positions to fill as well. Aquitarian, Guffrey to Barcelona, you're the best we have at the moment. A high Almanir, Bernat, boost that piety, my friend. All right, very, very nice. Goofrey did give up drinking as well. However, we are at a critical phase in our life, and it's something I need to address right away. Why must I always do everything myself, I ask? How can I be expected to rule over Aragon? When half of my servants are incompatible, incapable, follow my orders, and the other half doesn't understand them. I'm now irritable. Reduces my stress level, though. I will call a hunt to further it as well. 
He has accepted my marriage proposal. Fantastic, which means we should have a good for court physician. Fantastic as well. All is going according to plan. Ransoms have been paid. We are waiting on ransoms to increase for these other lads as well. We'll keep an eye on Despot Dorotheos. 158 would be great, but we could certainly do it even f further in the future. And at last, one last look. Whereas we had several factions going against us, it's now slowly turning to be oh, not worth it for them. At least they're not to the point where their military power could be reached outside of this Liberty faction. This is the only one that truly terrifies me, but perhaps we can even do things that work in our favor, including calling people as a defender, which would make us even better. There is a war brewing. Whether or not I can take it on as new Emperor of Aragon is yet to be seen. My lovely wife, Countess Isabeau of Barry, has given birth to a daughter. Blanca is actually a very nice name. I approve of it. Daughter, you are inheriting a time that is quite volatile. I hope I can keep you safe. Hope I can keep you mine. I look forward to seeing you grow. Well done, my wife. Well done, my wife, indeed. I have returned home invigorated from my hunt, having gained some prestige as well. Theodosius, my prisoner, has died. I think it's time to do what I can to ransom who and what I can. Simply before someone else dies, I lost a little bit of money. And no sooner than Duke Viviano, who isn't necessarily a fan of me. I bring rich gifts worthy of your majesty as token of my good will. I wait patiently in the throne. He kneels in deference as attendants bring forth his gifts. The oath is taken. Scribes record his pledges. Though the Duke has clearly practiced the Doc Bulgar vows, he mispronounces several sections, humorously changing their meaning, leaving my courtier stifling. Good effort, Viviano. It's not an easy language. I gain prestige. I gain gold, court grandeur, and renown. And the moment I knew would come from the man I knew to whom it would come from. Duke Geoffrey of Aragon, my cousin, my vassal. Our fathers were so close. But it's time for me, apparently, to recognize the ancient and inalienable rights. Except the demands of the Liberty faction, I will not be threatened. They only have a thousand more troops than I do. I have lost all of my council, which can be easily fulfilled once again. So it's more of your loss than mine. Now I can put Vittoria. The worst part is that I lose my marshal. Theodorus, you're not near the man that I would hope you could be, but that is okay. The best part about this is I now get to call and summon all of the men with no prestige hit whatsoever. It's time to move my rally point to Barcelona proper, raise all the men I can here, having lost several of them. Holy orders, I indeed get to use. Order knights, crossbowmen, 203 piety is no issue whatsoever. Captain Ubaidin of the Basques, Indeed, let's go to war. Joined. More have joined. Perfect. Now, I will have to kind of be weary of where I go because that's a lot of troops coming at me. There are 9,000 soldiers coming into here. Now, I have 20,000. I simply have to wait for my allies to come in, which is something hopefully will happen very soon. But look at that, rebellions across the realm. Oof. This one's gonna be a long and bloody one without a doubt. All right, let's make our move. One army down. Can we move on? Hmm, I think we can. The question is, will my allies follow me? It appears that they are not going to. I don't want to lose Barcelona. It appears I have no choice. Mercenary companies are expiring, which is no problem at all. 
We are sieging them down as quickly as we can, without a doubt. This is so painful to watch as my home gets wrecked. Oh no, my son's been taken hostage. Several things have happened all at once. My marshal is down. I will replace him as soon as I can. My friend, remember all the good times. It is now time to move. Let us move as a unified force and take on... Yes, we've captured them. Brilliant. Punk hug. Go back to where you belong. Which is now in a dungeon. We will retake Barcelona and push our advantage as quickly as we can across the realm. Other things are happening, which is very, very unfortunate. But we should be able to retake Barcelona unbelievably quick. And it's now time to move on. Grandmaster, Knights Templar, you will aid me. We will take on one capital as quickly and as efficiently as we can. They now have significantly less troops after that first battle. What a battle indeed. They lost so many. I have an available perk, which is great vassal contributions. Hmm. Hmm. No, we will go after large levies and soon forgiven. Perhaps even down chains of loyalty and likable for the future in the sake of our kingdom. There we go. It's time to go after them yet again. We can win here, I believe. There are a few things I enjoy more than Alfredo's company as we are campaigning. He dragged me around and the high pace truly helped keep my mind off of things. I've lost some stress, which is a great thing to see in this time of war. Follow me. Follow me, allies. Follow me, allies. We have a chance to end the war here, possibly. Our knight killed Paolo. Yes. You don't stand a chance. 96%. This war will be over very quickly. And in less than two years, the Liberty War has been broken. I imprisoned Duke Rudolf, the, Duke Guthrie II, Duchess Adelaide, Count Yeshua, Count Ponhug, Count Odomendus, Count Bowden. None of these guys can join a faction for 10 years, but more than that, None of them will live. You see, suffering of others is something that I enjoy, not to mention that I am indeed a murderer. Hmm. I can make you a eunuch. Hmm. Don't know that I would do that. Hmm. I can execute you. Hmm. I think that works. Do go free. I'm going to flay you to death. Count Yeshua. I think I'm going to burn you alive. Count Onamundus. I will negotiate your release. Hmm. You don't seem to really want to... negotiate yourself. Well, what if I crushed you to death? Anyone else? Count Pog? What if I mm, boil you alive? Count Bodan? What if I hang you? Duchess? Mm, dynastic Kinslayer. Mm. I'll ransom you. Call it an act of mercy. We can disband all. Ah, let's grant this. Let's see now. Hmm. My cousin? Hmm. Who's got a rather low opinion of me? Who has a high rank, rather? Gifre de Barcelona. Hmm, rather, let's go after someone who maybe. Hmm, Shaban? Yeah, why not? Congratulations. There we go. All right. Fantastic. Great. Well, that was fun. That was very fun indeed. Now that that's over with, I think I can take a little bit of a breather. Although, hmm. Syracuse still has to recover. All right, not too bad. We have plenty of gold. We can do whatever we want with it. But I think that's all. A violent entry into my emperorship indeed, but one I think I held with 
<sighs> a little bit of grace, a little bit of uh, not necessarily mercy, but one that mm, mm, I think is important to have. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will end the episode. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. This will be a fun way to wrap up the series. Of course, we will continue in the next episode. We still have a little bit more to conquer in Sicily. But of course, if at any point you enjoyed this episode, I do hope that you hit that like button. If you haven't, then go ahead and do that. You can also subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications, and of course, leave your comments in the comment section down below. Man, I'm excited about this. What a family dynasty we've got going on. Thank you once again. I'll see you in the next episode. This is Havoc. Take care. Iberia, ravaged by the bloody tides of four, kings and sultans, dukes and emirs. Adversity makes for strange bedfellows, my friend. And you must read carefully if you are to decide the fate of Iberia.